How many of you have ever served on the jury? Just raise your hand. You ever, how many of you have been called to jury duty and didn't get to serve? How many of you remember who what Perry Mason's occupation was? <laughs> okay. And how all the other names, could you give me all the other names where he's been, where he's been a lawyer? Ladies and gentlemen, you are now officially the jury of this sermon. We're going to put Jesus on trial. And at the end of this sermon, I'm going to ask you as the jury to decide about Jesus. Now, if you've got your Bible, open to John 5, 31, and we'll look through John 5, 31 through verse 39. And then you'll put a marker there. That's where we'll spend most of the sermon. But we'll be to the last two verses of John 15 in just a minute. Here's, I'm not sure who I am. I know you're the jury. Sometimes I feel like I'm the defense attorney. Sometimes I feel like I'm the prosecuting attorney. But I know what you are. You are the jury. And folks on the jury cannot go to sleep. I don't know what it is in your part, but in part of the country where I where I've gone, if people went to sleep and the jury you just somebody just come up and slap them. So I, I I don't want any of you to go to sleep during this. This is important. All right? Let's call let's let's call our first witness. John 5 31. Jesus says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. I need to borrow your imagination. Jesus Christ, will you come up here and sit in the witness chair? And he, and he gets up and he walks up here. Unlike anything you've ever seen, you really thought it was a handsome guy. He has no beauty nor comeliness that we should not desire him. Sort of ordinary, ordinary folk. And uh, wait a minute. John 5, 31 says, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. But are you aware that in jury trials, the very first thing you do is take your name. Sometimes they ask you to spell your name. We're not going to ask Jesus to spell his name. But in John chapter 8 and verse 14, Jesus says, I know who I am and where I came from. Sir, Jesus, uh, where are you from? Well, uh, I, 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 I guess you to say I'm from Nazareth. Oh, Nazareth. All right. Uh, that's not a very, not, does not have a very high reputation. Ladies and gentlemen, jury, I want you to understand this man is from Nazareth. And, and I would, he is on trial today. We got to decide about him. But he's not from a he's not from a very notable place. Uh, uh, sir, were you, were you born in Nazareth? No, it said the, uh, before Nazareth, I was down in the land of Egypt. You're in the land of Egypt. Yeah, the, my parents took me down there when I was just an infant and everything. And before that, where were you? Well, before that, I was uh, I was in Bethlehem. <laughs> And so are we in some other place before we were born? And this man says, yes, I was in heaven. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the jury, this man we got on trial here says he was in the beginning, he was called the Word, and he was with God, and he was God. Ladies and gentlemen, the jury, I ask you to what, study this witness right now because this is the man that's on trial. And in your deliberations, you're going to have to decide whether he really is God. That's what he says he is, and that's what this trial is all about. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have got to listen to every witness, and you've got to make up your mind, is he really the son of young people? You've got, this is where you are right now. You've grown up, and you know, your parents have told you all about the tooth fairy, the Easter money, and all that good stuff. I'm saying something out of place. But you understand, uh, you have to see how that turned out. You've got to have your own faith. Rain bears don't fly, I'm sorry. But this man, this man is sitting up here and and, and uh, he says, before Abraham was, I am. I existed before Abraham. But wait a minute. You need to understand that you need to make a judgment because he says he's the son of God. Only three possibilities. The fellow could be insane. And in your deliberation, you've got to decide, is this man a lunatic up here? He was there in the creation. He was there when, when, the, when God threw out all the sun and the moon and the stars. He was there whenever the, the world was made. This man says he was there. Is he a lunatic? He doesn't know any better. Oh, maybe he's not a lunatic. Maybe he's a liar. 
People have lied for religious reasons, haven't they? Many people have gotten rich because they lied. And I want you to know that this man says he's the Son of God. He may not know. He may really think he is. Or he may know better, but he's got an ulterior motive. And that's what you are to decide. Is he one of these religious televangelists that's just trying to get, trying to make some money and everything on his own? Here, he is either, he's a lunatic or he's a liar. The other possibility is his Lord. That's what you, as ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that's what you've got to decide. Let's call a second witness. Look at verse 33. Now I've got another witness, and that is John. John the Baptist. Yep, yep. John, John the Baptist. He, he's the one. John the Baptist, would you please come and come and, 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 and sit up here uh, in, in, in this in, sit up here in this chair? And lo and behold, here's this guy that comes up. He's a country bumpkin, and I tell you, you see how he's dressed? Camel's hair. He looks like he's been eating locusts and wild honey, doesn't it? I mean, you know. But uh, but now wait a minute. Uh, John says, or Jesus says, John, I bear witness of myself. I'm the son. John bears witness that I'm the son of God. Got that leather garment on, you know, the leather. Got that camel's hair garment, the leather girdle around him, a leather belt around him. And uh, uh, John, do you have John? John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Matthew 21, 26. Everybody that knows John considers him to be a prophet. You know what a prophet does? A prophet has a message from God and a prophet speaks that message from God. John the Baptist? John the Baptist? Who is Jesus? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, a prophet of God sits in this chair. And everybody that knows this man without a single exception thinks he is a prophet of God. Listen to what the prophet of what this man is a prophet of God. John the Baptist, is he the son of God? And Jesus points, or pardon me, John points at Jesus and says, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. John, how do you know he's a prophet? John chapter 1, verse 33 and 34. John said, before I ever started preaching, the Lord said, I will give you a sign. And the sign by which you will know that, that, that who the Messiah is, who is the one you are the forerunner for, prepare the way for the Lord. My sign, God says to John, before you ever start preaching, John, you will see the heavens open and you will see the Holy Spirit come down on you. John? prophet of God God told you that you would see the heavens open and the spirit of God descending down upon him John did you ever see that John said when I baptized you and the prophet of God said I saw the heavens open and I saw the spirit of God that's him right away Wow. Liar, lunatic, Lord. And a prophet of God says, He's the Messiah. Witness number three. The works that I do, Jesus said, bear witness of me. Could we call a, a blind man? sit in the chair could he tell you about that time that you, he heard Jesus spit on the ground and, and he felt him uh, as he as he took that clay and rubbed it on his eyes and said go to wash in the pool of Sodom blind man who is this man John chapter 8 says you Pharisees may not know who he is. How can you not you know who he is? Because since the world began, not one person has ever had his eyes open. And this man, Jesus, opened my eyes. And the crippled man, and the lepers, and the deaf, 
those who had palsy, those who were paralyzed, those who were let down through the rooftop, bring that man and let him, let him tell you how he took up his bed and walked. Mary and Martha, come and tell us about your experience with this man. Our brother had died. And he stood outside that tomb and says, Lazarus, come out. And with our own eyes, when that man Jesus, whenever he, whenever he said, come out, our brother was raised from the dead. What about that poor widow whose only son had died? Isn't that widow in the Bible? Her livelihood was gone. She had no way of living. And I was taking my son to bury him. And Jesus came up and he touched the casket. And my son came out of that out of that casket. The works that I do, they bear witness of me. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as far as historical record, Jesus of Nazareth was never around a blind man that did not see, a deaf man that did not hear, a mute who did not speak. He was never around a leper that was not cleansed. He was never around a crippled man who did not walk away. And as far as the divine record goes, he was never around a dead body that was not raised from the dead. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, lunatic, liar, or Lord. Witness number four, the Father himself bears witness of me. John the Baptist, come back. You speak the truth, John. You are a prophet. Tell us about that baptism. I saw the heavens open. I heard the Spirit. I saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And I heard a voice from heaven that says, This is my Son. Prophet of God. I heard a voice. I heard the Almighty Father say, Jesus is my son. That's my son. I still played football. I still a little fall too. We had 14 players on the football team. He weighed 120 something pounds, and his responsibility was there was another guy who weighed about 120. And they were the 11th guy that they ran in every play and took him to play, okay? And so a little small school playing all this, and lo and behold, uh, uh, I was there. I was, I was, doing, I was doing the PA announcement. I was, I was on the PA, you know, calling the, you know, it's a, it's a third down and four or something like that. But you know what we do. And so, uh, and so we scored a touchdown. My son went in, and the coach said, call your own number. And my son ran in a two-point conversion. <laughs> and a proud daddy said, and the two-point try was successful, and it was run in by, by, uh, uh, by, by, by my son David Jenkins, or run, run in by David Jenkins, and that's my son <laughs> in whom I am well pleased. <laughs> Father, God Almighty says he's the Son of God. <clears throat> Liar, lunatic, the Lord. It's number five. The scriptures. Verse 39. Search the scriptures. They bear witness of me. And all, all the way through the all the way through the nobody's going to sleep with. Are you, ladies and gentlemen, you're remarkable. I would thought by now somebody would be snoring out loud. But still be. <laughs> Witness number five Old Testament prophets. How many Old Testament prophecies there are about Jesus? 334. Born in Bethlehem, born of a virgin. Going down to Egypt, out of Egypt I called my son. He should be called Nazarene, that's why he went to Nazareth. The eyes of the blind will be open. The ears of the deaf will be unstopped when the Messiah comes. That's Isaiah 53. And we call every Old Testament promise. 
And we read every one of those 332 prophets in the Old Testament, and every one of them relates the prophecy that Jesus, that they foretold about Jesus. And we ask every single one of them, is there any prophecy that you gave that Jesus did not fulfill? And without a single exception, everyone says, he finished every one of them. He fulfilled every one of them. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that man Jesus is not the son of God then how will we ever know when he comes because he's done away with all those prophecies Amazing. witness number six there are only seven witness number six Jesus says the Holy Spirit will bear witness Did the Holy Spirit bear witness of Jesus? When did the Holy Spirit ever testify about Jesus? They begin to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's Acts 2. You know that verse. That's not Peter's sermon. We call it Peter's sermon all the time. No, no, no. God took over Peter's mouth and the mouth of all of those apostles and, and made them speak languages they had never spoken. And here is the message they spake. Jesus of Nazareth, Acts 2.22, a man approved of God among you by the miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in your midst. And every one of you know that. Everybody that was there knew he'd done all those miracles. Him being delivered by the foreknowledge of God now sits at the right hand of God exalted and God has made him the Lord and the Christ, the Messiah. The Holy Spirit of God says, Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all say Jesus is the Messiah. And that threefold cord is never breakable. Number seven. The apostles. Is Christianity a faith? I put a gun to your head and I say is Jesus the Son of God, if you've been a liar, if you've been a telling man in this right hand man, you've been the guy who said, and here's God, man of the hour. I've got a gun in your head. Didn't you lie when you tell me that? Yes, he would have. And they all gave their life to accept him as God. Every one of those men that were with him gave their life. I was saying earlier. That's it, gentlemen. Time for the jury to leave. Time for the jury to leave. <coughs> Seven witnesses. Jesus says, I'm the Son of God. John said, He's the Son of God. The works of Jesus, the blind, and all of those individuals say it's the Son of God. All of these things added together and then add to that to the Father. The entirety of the Old Testament Scriptures, the Holy Spirit, and the dedication and the sacrifice of, of those who were eyewitnesses and companions. It's up to you to decide. Wait just a minute. I'm going to call one more witness. Would you come and sit on this chair? And your heart is pounding because you know when you walk up here, I'm going to ask two questions. 
do you believe that all of your heart that Jesus is the Son of God? If you really believe that, then you need to be baptized. If you really believe he's the Son of God, and if you know there's sin in your life, you need to let the blood of Jesus wash your sins away. Are you washed in the blood? If you really believe he's the Son of God. You need to do that today. The other question, you know, that I may ask you is, do you believe it's the Son of God? And does your life show it? If the gun were in your head, what is there in your life that would show it? Killed the Son of God. What shall we do? There's no hope, is there? We killed God's Son. And it's this simple. They were believers. They believed that Jesus was the Son of God. And Peter said, If you repent, you make up your mind to be a Christian. Turn your back on what? On your life. You've been baptized, and he will wash away every sin you may have committed. One question we've got to ask, do you believe he's the Son of God? And based on the confession of your faith, we'll baptize you this very day. Water is here, the baptistry is here, clothing is here, and this could be the very day that you make up your mind Are you washed in the blood? If you're a wayward Christian, you may need to make some changes to it. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it's not a jury that is mean, but on your own. <coughs> Do you believe that Jesus is the Son? changes you need to make in your life will help you make those changes and you can just come and talk right now ask